The evil that is in this world almost always comes of ignorance, and good intentions may do as much harm as malevolence if they lack understanding. On the whole, men are more good than bad. That, however, isn't the real point. The soul of the murderer is blind, and there can be no true goodness, nor true love, without the utmost clear-sightedness. Many of you may have heard of the term the banality of evil, in passing or perhaps read it in a book somewhere. Quite possibly, some of you may never have heard of it at all. Either way, you've definitely come to the right place. So what is the banality of evil? Well, as a concept, it bears a close resemblance to the notion discussed in the opening quote by Albert Camus, but the term itself was coined by the German-born philosopher Hannah Arendt. Evil, she claims, is far from an uncompromising and absolute badness, rather it is something disturbingly close. We are all capable of dark deeds, she says, oftentimes we are led there through myriad influencing factors. Dogma, a steadfast belief in something one believes to be incontrovertibly true, can spread misinformation, which itself feeds prejudice. Zeal, or fervour, is simply just having a strong conviction in a cause. If one's cause is misguided, then this zeal can lead to them conscientiously doing something terrible. Vice, such as envy, greed or pride, can very feasibly lead to bad action, and in fact often does. In short, these are traits that we all can or do regularly exhibit. Evil deeds are not committed by people profoundly devoid of humanity and morals, rather they are committed by normal people for human reasons, reasons owed to the complexity of human nature. Or, as the 18th century Prussian philosopher Immanuel Kant said, the depravity of human nature then is not so much to be called badness, but rather perversity of heart. But isn't this just stating the obvious, you may ask? Well, if we strip it back to this bedrock formulation, then yes. Of course, immoral acts are caused by vice and human imperfection. If this is all Hannah Arendt is arguing for, then it's a truism. Moreover, one might say it's not even a very useful thing to point out. Take Vlad III, for instance, the 15th century voivode of Wallachia, the famous Impaler, or Dracula. He was famed for his cruelty and brutal punishments, namely impaling, hence the cognomen. He was also described as being a determined, patriotic and prudent ruler. And sure, these supposedly good traits may have been the basis for his not very good actions, but highlighting this does little to add to our impression of him as an evil character. So what exactly is Hannah Arendt arguing against when she posits the banality of evil? While there are actually several competing theories as to the nature of evil that predate her thesis, building on the historically discredited cosmology of Macanean evil, we can view evil as a privation or lack of goodness. We can interpret this in many ways, of course. A Christian may say that evil is the absence of God, or alternately, the dire machinations of Lucifer. A Neoplatonist, someone who believes that there is a metaphysical or otherworldly form or entity of goodness, may similarly view evil simply as something which doesn't participate in the form of the good. But these theories largely depend on concomitant metaphysical attachments and so on, so to reject the attached metaphysical commitments is akin to rejecting the possibility of evil, which we don't want to do. As we want to view evil in the most acceptable terms, we shall try to phrase our rendering of it as encompassing as possible, which for the purpose of this video we shall call absolute evil. Absolute evil then is the notion that evil acts are driven solely by wickedness, depravity and malevolence. This leaves it open for one to say that these acts originate with Satan, or are the remnants of a deficiency of the good, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. What's left as an absolute evil is the idea that evil is something profoundly immoral and motivated wholly by bad factors. So what about absolute evil? Convinced? Well, it certainly seems similar to our standing conception of evil. Evil is something really, really bad. There are plenty of people who seem to qualify as embodying it, both real and fictitious. The character of Iago in Shakespeare's Othello seems like a good candidate. He single-handedly manipulates the eponymous general and tricks him into killing his wife and later out of remorse himself. Why does he do this? Seemingly just because he can. In fact, even when he is apprehended and questioned about his motives, he refuses to tell them purely out of spite. Demand me nothing, he says. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. Another good candidate for evil, this time non-fictional, is Joseph Stalin. General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union between 1922 and 53. He was responsible for the deaths of millions of people, ordering multiple ethnic cleansing, deportations and executions. He is alleged at having said, death solves all problems, no man, no problem. Finally, we can look at John Milton's characterization of Lucifer in his epic poem Paradise Lost. 
farewell hope, Lucifer bemoans, and with hope, farewell fear, farewell remorse, all good to me is lost, evil, be thou my good. Here, he explicitly commits himself to the service of evil and badness, this in the fact that he's literally the devil, make him a good candidate for evil. So far, absolute evil seems minimally operative as a theory, people who we commonly class as such do class as such under our formulation, so in this respect it seems convincing. Unless you're Hannah Arendt, in which case it doesn't. She says, absolute evil holds that evil acts are driven solely by wickedness, depravity and malevolence. But, she argues, no actions are driven solely by these factors. In fact, evil actions are caused by human fault, such as vice, dogma and misunderstanding. And as there are a lot of actions caused by human fault, in this respect we can say that evil is banal or ordinary. This argument is what is known as the famous, and what you're here for, the banality of evil. It's important to note, by the way, that Arendt is not saying that evil perpetrated by the likes of Adolf Hitler is forgivable or in any way ordinary, but rather that their deeds are distinctly human in character. It's an uncomfortable truth. Evil again is not something scarily other and exclusive to a select few individuals. Evil is something that we all can fall to. It is the product of human condition. As W.H. Auden says, evil is unspectacular and always human, and shares our bed and eats at our own table. Not convinced? Well, let's look again at the aforementioned examples. First, Iago. One could argue that his actions were inspired by a feeling of bitterness or injustice, as he had felt he had not been appreciated as Othello's ensign, and had been passed up for promotion in favour of someone worse suited. Stalin, despite his ruthlessness, was said to still be capable of occasional acts of kindness towards strangers. Furthermore, revisionist historians now think that Stalin was deeply mentally ill, plagued by severe paranoia. Alexander Myastikov thought that Stalin's fear of enemies was, quote, caused by atherosclerosis of the cerebral arteries. The country was being run, in effect, by a sick man. Finally, we have Lucifer, who is ultimately a tragic character. In the poem, he expresses deep sadness and regret for the failure of his coup and the subsequent exile of his compatriots to hell. Arguably, his actions undertaken in Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained are informed by his sympathy for his demons and his want to avenge them. Of course, Lucifer here falls to Sophocles' classic blunder, where, it's true, all concerns of men go wrong when they wish to cure evil with evil, but it remains a real and in some ways relatable motive. The banality of evil then accounts for the nature of these characters very well, and on face value, prima facie is both a highly intuitive and yet fairly humble thesis. In summation, it simply argues that evil is everywhere and is worryingly easy for us all to fall to. Men never do evil so completely and cheerfully as when they do it following their conscience, as Pascal says in Pensees. If we accept Arendt's thesis, we don't have to exculpate and forgive evil actions, but at least we are one step closer in our understanding of them. And unfortunately, that is the end of the video, and I hope that you now understand the concept of the banality of evil. If you are familiar, by the way, with the text which the term comes from, you'll know that Hannah Arendt argues for her thesis in relation to the Nazi leader and Obersturbenführer Adolf Eichmann, making it a very controversial piece of philosophy. If you are interested in us doing an explanation video on this actual text, then please like this video, and in fact, like it anyway if you enjoyed it. Now, similarly, if you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to turn on notifications so that you're alerted when a new video of ours pops up. In the meantime, thank you for watching.